Welcome to the Backpage Lead Vidcast. Wayne Carey, how are you? Charlie, very well. You're up in Queensland on the weekend again? Yep. Did Why do you have to tell everyone where I am every weekend? <laughs> That's all right. I, was, I of, was up there though. A lot yeah. of people want to know what you're up there. Yeah, to. no worries. Look, I I'm not a tweeter. I'm not a tweet, so <laughs> let's not make this my tweet account. Oh, uh, that's true. We've <laughs> talked about yeah. that. You're never going to get on it? No. no. It's half time at the footy. We've had 12 rounds and we've got 12 to go. Um, might be time for a mid season review. What, what's caught your eye so far? What's been the highlight for Wayne Carey? Oh, I think the highlight probably is I think West Coast's improvement. Yep. I think they've, uh, they look like they might be the real deal. I think the way they're, they're playing their footy. I love the fact that Dean Cox, Embley and Kerr, Kerr. are all playing good footy again for West Coast. Um, what else? I think probably the, mo the biggest surprise would without a doubt be St Kilda and the Western Bulldogs. Yep. In saying that, um, St Kilda are only just out of the eight, sitting ninth right now. So I still think the Saints will make the, uh, make the eight, but I think they've, they've definitely been the surprise. Like the way uh, Carlton have gone about their work, mm. also. Um, I don't think Collingwood's a big, any big surprise. For a few of those, a few people out there, probably Geelong. I think they're um, yeah. probably surprised a few. But Chris um, Scott's coaching. Um, Chris Scott's coaching. Well, inherited a fair. Inherited, right? a, inherited a good, uh, a good squad. At the end of the day, they've got a very good list. But they're the things that stand out. I think. Um, yeah. Carlton was very, very much part of the equation now what part of the big three and I wonder uh, it's not really a season highlight but um, Jared Ruffhead going down with an Achilles tendon injury at the weekend uh, Hawthorne is that ruined them or are they still half a chance he's been he's been in uh, great form Ruffhead I think you know the fact that they've thrown him into the ruck now and he's sort of mm -hmm. I, think, I think he's found his uh, he's found his mark unfortunate for him you know we don't know Exactly how long do we? Is it could be? I think it's be, season. Could be the season. Yep. If it is, that's a real shame, and, and that certainly hurts them because um, you know he's been a very good player for them. Yeah. Uh, the mag. What about those Maggies on Monday? I mean, uh, undermanned, lost without three of their better players, um, one through suspension and two in Arizona, belted Melbourne by 15 goals. And I think what's an interesting factor about their season is just how good their last quarters have been. I think they've, they've scored 69 goals, if I can refer to my notes quickly, and their oppositions have kicked 24. So that's a sort of differential of 45 goals. Now, what's the secret? Is it just fitness, or is it you, this Utah high altitude training got something to do with it? Or oh, I think it's got a bit of. I think it's got a bit of all of that. I think it's got self belief. Uh, they know that when they get challenged, they're, they're capable of. Uh, switching the switch, so to speak, um, and they've got great belief in one another, one another, their structures and the way they go about it. And mm -hmm. I think Mick Malthouse actually mentioned that in his press conference after the game where he said that it doesn't matter who you bring in, they, if they you know, stick to the structures that the, the coaches want them to do, then it really doesn't make all that much difference. Um, albeit two of their better players, Swan and, and that, uh, not in that side. They, uh, they're very good. Um, on the flip side of that, Melbourne, um, you know, what we wanted out of them was a little bit of consistency and, you know, probably show a little bit more um, backbone, if you like, um, because, let's be honest, they've been up and down mm. like a yo-yo and they really, we, we really wanted them to show a little bit more backbone. I don't think they were, they certainly weren't able to do that, so um, they're back to the drawing board. Yeah, you know, know. It's, it's, it's back where they were two weeks ago now. They might get panned in the press this week and come out firing again yeah, next week. Yeah. well... We'll see. They've got to be more consistent than that. Now, I know you, uh, you wouldn't have tweeted Dane Swan, your friend in Arizona, but have you made a more conventional contact with him? Do you know what he's up to over there? I don't think he's training pretty hard. Are they doing it hard, are they? Um, well, I'd assume so. That's, uh, I go off what I read in the Herald Sun, and that's uh, you've got to believe everything you read, don't you? <laughs> um, yeah, the, the benefits of this training i mean we sort of touched on it a, a bit last week i mean it's it's a it's a luxury that the wealthy clubs can afford isn't it to, to be able to send three well it is three. we don't know how I, look as far as uh swanny's concerned i'm not so sure um, i'm not sure of his exact injury but i'm sure for those longer term ones that they, you know it may may very well help mm. um, i'm not sure how long they're staying over there for either you I don't know. Look, I, I don't. I don't know the science behind it. But if Dave Butterfin's behind it, then you can be guaranteed that it's giving them some benefit. And I think he's the best in the business. Who was at North when you were? It was at North uh, in '96, '97, '98, and I think he left. He might have left before '99 because mm. of the Olympics. 
in 2000. Yep. Um, and then, oh, okay. and then uh, Collingwood brought out the big checkbook <laughs> and uh, off he went. Now let's talk about a, an interesting sort of developing story today. Joel Selwood um, has been given three matches by the match review panel for um, supposedly belting Brent Guerra and giving him a perforated eardrum. Now, um, Selwood is challenging that decision at the tribunal tonight and by, by, by which time um, we won't be publishing this video until after the hearing. But the, the grainy TV footage I've seen does not um, present an open and shut case at all, I would have thought. It's very inconclusive. He'd had every, every right to challenge this, would he not? I actually uh, have not seen the incident. have not seen the incident, saw a fair bit of it, did not see that. Um, so I'll have to go off, uh, go off your... You, <laughs> you do that, Charlie. You go to pass. But it comes a week after yeah. Dale Thomas hitting Clint Jones. And yep. I wonder whether, like, Thomas has had a five year clean record as well. Selwood's had a, a very clean run with the what, tribunal. So, what are you saying? They were fairly similar incidents? No, I'm not. I'm just saying the ball players, are, maybe, they're, you know, maybe they're getting fed up with well, some of the. It, does, he, does, he, does, it, does he deserve a week or what is it? I'm, I'm saying he, um, he's well within his rights to challenge because the footage is so inconclusive. Um, you, you know, you cannot, you couldn't be hung, drawn and quartered on the basis of that. But if he's got a perforated eardrum, then... Is it deliberate or is it accidental? Is it... What's happened? Well, 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 you, I don't know. You don't, you don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. No. Um, all will be revealed. But is that... That's a, obviously a big blow to the cat. I think if he gets... Yeah, that's right. Well, obviously, but if uh, Guerra's got a perforated eardrum too, I don't know how many weeks um, that... You know, how many weeks you miss with an injury like that. Mm. Accidents happen, don't they? Yeah, of course they do. Um, tell me, and Jared Ruffhead's injury is one of the other big things to come out of the weekend. Um, uh, did you ever do an Achilles when you were playing? Or no, never, never, no, never did an Achilles. And, and from what they, from what uh, once again, only what I've read, they say they're fairly hard to come back from. Just the confidence, he's yeah. a big guy, just to have that spring. And yeah. Um, so yeah, interesting times ahead for him. But a, a real shame because he's in he's in uh, red hot form and. Um, you know, they've uh, they're, they're they're in with a good they're in with a show Hawthorne. So the new David Hale to step miss, up. Missing him will now now Hale certainly has to uh, step up. Mm. It was done in the most innocuous circumstances too. He was honestly just uh, it was just sort of he was almost coming. Off, it was, I think it was a boundary, boundary throwing. throwing. Yeah, didn't uh, yeah look and 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 you have to wonder whether that's the extra work rate that he's done this yeah. year by being in the ruck. Mm. He's probably run more than he's ever run in his life this year. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm sure they'll look at that. Uh, Rugby League has its state of origin second match tomorrow night, Wednesday night, and it's the pinnacle of their season, isn't it? M much more so than club footy. It's the representative yep. footy that really gets them going. Have we missed the boat with that with the AFL, or do you reckon there's some, some scope still of that representative footy coming back to the AFL? No, look, it's not. It's just not the same. You're not. Mm. You're not comparing apples with apples. Um, you know, you have the two big states in rugby league, hence that's why you have that in our game. It's played all around Australia, um, South Australia, Western Australia, Tasmania. You know, even Queensland, New South Wales. It's, it's played everywhere. So, if we were just to have state of origin, and in my honest opinion, the big game. There was only one big game. Sorry to all those Western Australians out there. And even to the uh, and even to the you know once they uh, started the concept of um, you know the allies, yep. just didn't have the same feel for me. Um, yep. You know, even I played for New South Wales. I'd never actually played for the allies, but it was named. Played in that one game. I played for South Australia against Victoria, and that was the game. Now, so unless you're playing for either of those states, then I, I really think that it just lacks what the state of origin, state yeah. of origin in the rugby um, has, and that's that real uh, hatred, I suppose. Yeah. There is a real hatred, and there's um, and, it, and it's always been so competitive. I mean, South Australia, even before, um, you know, the Crows started, South Australia and Victorian games were always huge. They were, they were always so competitive. Players didn't want to come over and play in the VFL. They thought the yes, NFL was just as strong as the VFL. So it was certainly a, um, yeah, like I said, it was born on hatred and that's what these two uh, states have for one another in the rugby and I'll be one tuning in because uh, I'm a Wagga Wagga boy and let's hope New South Wales can get up and have a win. Go the Blues. Well it'll be about time it's been four or five years. 
But the leading co- the leading coaches in the AFL, and um, you might want to talk about Dennis Pagan here, never were never that keen on the concept of state of origin. All it meant for them was their ch- their better players, the chance of them getting injured. And I think you were down to play several times and might have been a late withdrawal or whatever. I yeah. mean, Dennis just didn't like it, did he? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, Dennis, no, he didn't like it a lot. Um, but at the end, it was always up to the player. And, and generally, that halfway mark of the year, a little bit different now, to be honest, um, probably... Uh, better now than ever before because you've got those buy- clubs have got those buys but it was a real opportunity for you to have a little bit of a rest so if there was needles I didn't pull out because I wasn't I, I was honestly not 100% fit oh, yeah. but if I played for the kangaroos that week yes yeah so but wasn't Dennis's choice it really comes right. comes down to the player you yeah, would have been twisting your arm I'm sure comes down to the player at the end of the day and the doctors Let's look ahead to round 13. A couple of interesting games. Um, North showing a bit of form. Bit of a resurgence at Roulin. And Bombers faltering a bit. I think they've lost three in a row. They meet in a game which, you know, they're two teams on the periphery of the final eight and give the Roos a chance to... It's an eight-point game, as they say, isn't it? To get to, to not get a rival well, and get a bit closer. Well, because, of, because of results, St Kilda are still in the mix, as we said. Kangaroos are still in the mix. And because of results, the Bombers are still sitting in eighth position mm. um, on the ladder. It really has been one of those years. Um, yeah, big game for both clubs. I think the Kangaroos are definitely in better form than, uh, the, than the Bombers right now. But I think James Heard would have been just quietly happy with the way they finished off um, yeah. on the weekend. They did finish off a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and he saw signs, I think he pointed it out, there were just signs that they were getting back to a bit of form. The two weeks prior to that, they said they, they were just you know um, out of form against Richmond and Melbourne. Showed a little bit on the weekend, yeah. so it, it, it does um, it does come for a it'll be interesting viewing. Actually, it'd be a good game, and two sides that have had a bit of rivalry over the last sort of twenty or so years, and generally uh, generally uh, you know they're good games. Daniel Wells is in, in career best form, doesn't he? Yeah, he seems to be responding well, to Well, I think one of the main things that everyone's been concerned with Daniel is his consistency. Um, you know, we've seen f- uh, flashes of brilliance um, yeah. from him. Have we seen that consistently? No. Um, I think we're seeing that more this year, so certainly his best year. Um, I think he's come, he came runner-up in the best and fairest a couple of years ago or, or in the top three or something like that. So, you know, what, what we see from outside, probably, you know, they value things yeah. that he's done, yeah. certainly... Uh, a little more than what we see, but um, from the outside looking in, he seems to be more consistent this year. The other one is Carlton and Sydney, third playing fifth on Sunday. Um, they've had a couple of really good games in the last nine months. They had a good final last year and then a good uh, match in round one. I mean, that's uh, shaping as a, a good one too, isn't it? Yeah, look, another another important one, especially uh, you know, especially if you're wanting to make the top four, and both of those clubs would be looking to do that. You know, I know that you know the coach and everyone else will say, "Well, we're just trying to you know get a win and make sure we get the eight. Well, if you're around that, if you're around the top four now, you're you're aiming for top four. You're not aiming for uh, you're not aiming for the top eight. You're aiming for the top four, and both those clubs would be doing it. With Matthew Cruz is showing some really encouraging um, comeback to the seniors on the weekend. Yeah, Did you yeah, see much of that. Yeah, no, I didn't didn't see a lot of it, mm. but um, you know, from what I understand, look, both both clubs in. Uh, in going very nicely. So uh, it'll be one that I'll probably tune into. Wayne Kerry, thank you very much. I promise not to give you whereabouts next week, uh, but look forward to speaking to you then. No worries. Thanks, Charlie.